I'm gonna keep it simple. You shouldn't let the outcome of a basketball game affect your mental. The Sixers lost to Detroit, it happens. LeBron, AD, Trez, Dennis Schroeder, and the Lakers are here tomorrow. We're on to the next one. Let's find out what went wrong. You know me, bro. Let's talk. Detroit opened the game on five of nine shooting from the floor in the first four minutes of play before Philly called a timeout. This would set the tone for the entire game and the Sixers kept trying to force feed Dwight the ball in the first quarter. The typical Sixers starting five lineup, which features Dwight Howard as opposed to Joel Embiid, has only played 17 minutes together but they've posted a net rating of minus 30.5. The numbers don't tell the whole story, but Dwight's far more impactful off the bench than he is as a starter. Turnovers didn't kill the Sixers. They only gave the ball up nine times. There were a few opportunities for the Sixers to bring Detroit within striking distance, but they turned the ball over on some crucial possessions. Game script aside, the Sixers were playing fatigued and with dead legs. They were fouled 78 times in a three-day span. Philly missed a lot of shots short. A lot of. This is usually indicative of Hoopers lacking strength in their lower body because their legs are tired. Another strong indicator of fatigue would be personal fouls committed. And the Sixers committed a season high 26 of them against Detroit. This game came on the heels of a physical two game series with Boston where they were fouled 50 times in both games combined. And then right after, they're on a plane to Detroit to play the Pistons. Tony Bradley, you didn't even play. What kind of shot was that? Anyway, Detroit fouled the Sixers a season high 28 times in the game before this one. So in a three day span, the Sixers were fouled a combined 78 times. For reference, that's 16 more times than Brooklyn in the same three day span. Matisse could have cut the Pistons lead to single digits here. Why didn't he shoot that? Ultimately, this was a classic trap game and you shouldn't put too much stock into it. Joe was rested for when the champs come on Wednesday and the Sixers just lacked the energy and mental preparedness to compete with Detroit in their second of two games. Despite the loss, there are still some positives to take away. The Sixers partially maintain their offensive identity by executing common plays in the playbook. Seth takes the handoff from Ben and Philly shows their double screens look again. The premise is to get Seth Curry downhill to drive or to hit a spot. So when Plumlee tries to get to the spot and defend it, Curry makes a nice bounce pass and that's probably a bucket if it's Joe. Similar to last game, Dwight dribbles to the far side wing to initiate the action. The defense anticipates Thibault will take the handoff and come around these double screens. But Dwight gives the ball to Shake and turns this look into a two man game. So Shake manipulates the defense and finds his rolling big. Here's two high screens for Maxi, and the premise is to just get him downhill to drive or to hit a spot where he's money at. And it worked to perfection. He got to a spot where he could comfortably get a shot off in space. Double screens for Tobias, but getting him downhill or to a spot isn't the only premise. To begin this play, Jeremy Grant was defending Tobias, but Detroit was switching on some screens. So now Tobias gets a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Mason Plumley. That's no comp, get him going. This is just simple two-man game with Ben and Shake, but the screen is significant here. See. The philosophy of the coaching staff is to draw legal contact on screens. Because when you do, look at how much separation your ball handler gets without having to do anything. My man Tobias is out there serving and getting grown man buckets. Tobias clears the screen and gets Mason Plumley to switch on him. That's a problem. So Tobias tests the water a little bit, sees if it's warm, pulls it, money! Tobias knows he's getting the switch, so he looks right at Mason Plumley. So you're not gonna check me out here? Okay. This exemplifies how important role definition is. Tobias knows he's getting a screen, so he starts getting downhill. And if you look into Tobias's mind with me for a minute, all he's thinking about is hitting a spot where he's money at. He does exactly that. Gets to the spot and deposits two. And here's why the screens are elevating the ball handler's games. These screens work to put the on-ball defender into the ball handler's pocket. So you got your little, uh, you got your Amiri jeans or your 
baseball mains, your trues, whatever you're rocking. Where's the pocket? It's on your hip. You got two in the back as well. Similar to this play, the on-ball defender is in Tobias's pocket, so he has more than enough room to craft his own shot. Look at 12 on the fast break. Wait room, wait room, he's too little. This marked his seventh game of 15 played with at least 20 points and 50% shooting from the floor. 2-5 only played 21 minutes and everyone's mad at him today. Let's find out why. By the time Ben gets a head start to get downhill, Blake Griffin knows what's up. While you can't recreate Ben's speed in practice, there's plenty of film, and every team has seen this. And this lack of unpredictability becomes advantageous for defenses as Blake just positions himself to get a charge. Ben picked up three fouls early, which meant he could only play two minutes in the second quarter. Watch the speed of 2-5 here. Blake! You're on an island, dog. Ultimately, Ben did make a few good plays. Give me that. But he ranks third in the NBA in first half fouls committed, so he can't be that impactful if he's not on the floor to play. Watch Ben hit this stride and go zero to 100 full court. Who wants to dance? Ben pushes pace off the live rebound here and draws all of Detroit's defensive attention in transition. This is the floor game that Doc Rivers speaks so highly about. Weakening and collapsing defenses to create shots for his teammates. Because if you notice, there's two trailing green light shooters in transition. Ben was aggressive shooting the ball in this game, but like I said, if he can't be on the floor because of foul trouble, that's nobody's fault but his own. And this is where that lack of unpredictability hurts him. He's got the speed and strength to get wherever he wants, but Detroit walls off this shot because they know it's coming. So he just kind of throws something at the rim. There wasn't much production off the bench, but there were a few nice plays nonetheless. The rookie Tyrese Maxey in transition transition good little euro you've been in the lab we can tell and even more impressively maxi is taking dudes off the dribble i love his patience and his command dribbling the basketball because he can just manipulate defenses and get into comfortable spots shake had a rough one but i'm not worrying he'll find that rhythm he's a hooper real briefly you know what time it is Let's look at the defense. Having Joe under the rim changes a team's entire offensive approach. I'm not so sure that Detroit drives as frequently and finds as much success around the rim as they did if Joe's playing. I just refuse to believe that DeLon Wright is cooking Joe. No disrespect to him or Tony Bradley. Much like the rest of Philly's opponents though, Detroit found a lot of success using screens. Because Philly's rocking with drop coverage, the on-ball defender is in the ball handler's pocket. So then the ball handler can just manipulate the center and either drive and shoot or pass it to the rolling big. And you can never stop a guy from hitting a spot if you're behind him or on his hip. You should trust that the staff will figure it out, and I'm still trying to find a solution. The problem with pulling Dwight or Joe far away from the basket to hedge screens is that they keep getting beat by guards and their speed. So we'll look for adjustments throughout the season. Look fam, that's it for me. I appreciate you hanging out with me. As always, I'll see you when I see you. I hope it's on Thursday for the Lakers Sixers breakdown, but if not, hit me up with a sub, comment below, holler at me on Twitter. Do whatever you gotta do, but most importantly, stay solid, baby. Stay solid, baby. Come on.